Maybe I'm completely wrong to say civil war, and it's more like the revolution is happening. It's been happening. It will continue to happen. And sooner or later, you will own nothing and you will be, well, <laughs> you'll be very unhappy. But don't worry. The government will give you pills or they'll flog you unless you say you're happy. You know, um, after I got arrested and got out of jail, you know, I started reading the eight page press release that the FBI wrote on my case and, and, and submitted to the media. And then the 30 page sentencing recommendation that the government created on my class B misdemeanor. And in it, they went through my social media and pulled a great number of tweets and things like that to sort of substantiate, you know, this person's a, a lunatic with violent tendencies and look at these things that he said. And they actually pulled a tweet where I had said, I said, make your peace right now with the fact that we're in a civil war. We didn't want it, we didn't ask for it, but it's here. And at this point, you better kind of open your eyes and, and see what's happening. And they're like, you know, he's promote, promoting civil war, this guy is dangerous. And I had to kind of explain to them, number one, if you look carefully, I'm saying it's already here. It, it's someone else started, it is, it's at your doorstep. But number two, when I talk about a modern civil war, and I think when we talk about a modern civil war, we're not talking about like grabbing your musket and taking out to the streets and starting and shooting people. We're talking about debanking people, freezing people from being able to send and receive money, from being able to exist on social media or exist in the public square, but, but, destroying people's reputations. But that's all the precursor. The look at look at civil wars throughout history. It doesn't start with one day a guy walks outside and says, "You know what." I'm just so darn mad at the president. I'm going to civil war. And then the people go outside with guns and start shooting at each other. Right. It happens because tensions between factions, either ideological, political, religious, or otherwise, start bubbling up to the point where people then say, I've had enough of you. You're dangerous. When you see roving bands of far left extremists going through cities and firebombing storefronts, this is how it starts. The way it starts is this. You will have a band of ideal ideological extremists. They will grow their ideology. It will, it'll, it'll percolate down through the masses throughout the entire country. They'll put up a banner. They'll identify each other. They'll recruit. One day, the extremists will commit very serious crimes. The police, the government, or locals will defend against those crimes, killing one of the extremists. The extremists will use that as evidence among their cult that they are being victimized and must fight back with violent force. Take a look at what happened in Georgia. Far left extremists occupying a forest opened fire on police officers, shooting one of them. These people had burned down private homes already, literally torched houses. They were they were under construction for sale houses. I'm not, I don't think people lived in there. They stopped a guy who was in his truck, a regular old dude, booted him out, of, booted him out and flipped it over and set it on fire. Ideological extremists. Then when the police get shot at, they return fire, killing one of the extremists. The corporate press and the activists then say the police assassinated one of our, our members. A peaceful, right. peaceful environmental activist was, was brutally murdered <laughs> by the police. And the Guardian was my favorite. They said the police provided no evidence that he was shot. The officer is said to be in stable condition in the hospital. He's like, okay, so the cop got shot by this guy. So we're at that point where there is no right wing equi equivalent to Antifa. No. Mm -hmm. The closest you ever got was Proud Boys. And the Proud Boys were so smart that when they got into a fight with Antifa, they walked up to the cops and said, here's my name and information. Thanks, officer. And the cops slapped cuff, cuffs on him and put him in prison for four years. Congratulations. The closest thing you can even get to any, anywhere near it is January 6th, which is, yes, a riot. Some, a lot of people in the front of the building violent. And then a lot of people on the other side of the building being let in. And what happens? The federal government pulls out all the stops to destroy anyone in any way associated with that day, if they can, if they can. Do you think it's hard for the public to believe that there can be left-wing domestic terrorists? Because I think back to all of the environmental groups in the 70s that re wrecked havoc everywhere. You know, they were extremely active. They burned buildings. They broke into places. Like, it, it's actually normal for domestic terrorism to be perpetrated by the left. But it seems like because they were the party of, like, peace and love and hippies, somehow we, like, forget to say, oh, wait, they can also have extremists. I, I think it's a combination of far left, far left extremists know they're lying. You know, we were talking earlier, I, I can't remember who said they don't think it's what they're doing is illegal. They, they know what they're doing is illegal. They don't care. They think they are morally justified in committing crimes against other people. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Yeah. Maybe that's a better way to say it because that, I was going to give the same answer that I gave earlier, which is that 
most of the time that there's violent extremism that comes from the left, it's often some way rooted to some sort of social injustice, which often is tied to race. And anytime the topic of race is involved, it seems like anything goes and anything can be justified. I mean, you can literally loot and kill and, and beat people up and burn pe and burn buildings down. And if people like us say, what the hell is going on? People say, oh, these people have been experiencing injustice for, you know, for generations. Whether, even when you're, whether, whether it's race or whether it's LGBT issues or whether it's class, it's all, or it's always a Trojan horse for some type of oppression. And it's always going to be moving leftwards. We live in the logic of Herbert Marcuse. You can read about this. Herbert Marcuse wrote it up in a, a an essay from the sixties called on tolerance or, or pure tolerance. Um, and essentially it says it's okay for the left to do whatever. It's consequentialism. It's just they're looking for a result, which is their policies instituted. And if their policies fail, that's fine because it moves the dialectic along. That's all it is. It's le the, the left is entirely built on a dialectic, uh, a, a, a dialectic system. So as long as they can impl uh, Im implement their policies, they're fine with lying. They're fine with whatever, with whatever means, because at the, at their core, they're not liberals. They don't believe in, in individual rights the way that we do. They don't believe that the rights that you have come from your humanity or from God or whatever. They believe that all rights come from the state. That means that your rights are just gifts. So there's no reason to argue about that you have the right for this or you have the right for that. You have whatever right th the state says. I think those ideologies are not as relevant as a lot of people think. They're certainly wielded as a weapon to guide and, and control these masses. But I, I believe that the far left extremists are chaos and nothing more. 